So my last sketch is going to be um, trees and snow. So I'm not sure if there will be any sky because I may not get there. But this is the sketch I'm doing again from my window. So I'm going to just add a little bit of green color that I kind of used. And that this time I finished very dense. So I'm going to add some whatever I have it's called phthalo green. So it's very cool green color, but it will work in mixing with brown. I just add more brown and it should be okay for some evergreens that I have here and I have one birch tree. So I'll just start messing it, blocking in first. And welcome back. I forgot to say this because I just finished the other sketch. So I think I'm still continuing. So I'm mixing some of uh, this green that I squeezed and some burnt sienna and fell green or it could be any green, it just depends. So I have quite a few trees here, but I'm not going to paint all of them, just only the ones that most obvious. So this is a very tall tree that in the very front and has its very thick Christmas tree. And so I'm going to put a little bit of brown here. It's very actually I'm glad that I put cool green because it is quite cool in the middle here where it's hidden in the shade. It kind of goes like this and it goes wider. But before I do that, I just realized I need to use my previous mixture of ultramarine and whatever was here, maybe a little bit of alizarin, a little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of alizarin and white, maybe more blue. I'm going to paint actually my snow first because I just realized that if I don't, I don't have anything under the trees, like the any background, so I'm going to use that. So I have a little bit of cobalt here as well, that will work. So very subtle shadows. I indicated those brown things, I indicated trees. So there is snow behind this pine as well. Because I can always go with lighter ones on top of it, but I want to put kind of thin, very thin underpainting to indicate my shadows. Kind of making dirt here. And then I will kind of decide or work out on my puzzle of others. So now I'm going back into this color for the tree. Now I can do on top of it with slightly thicker paint. And again, that's not the main paint I'm going to, like the first layer, it's on the first layer. I'm going to go with the other layer as well. going to use this paint gray because it's almost like blue and I have it on my palette so it's just for the tree trunks and a little bit of brown just indication of a tree trunk here then I skip my birch tree there is another pine here there is another one that further there will make a cooler trunk and then there are some pines here as well. This is just indications of their trunks for now. I don't want to go into my birch tree yet, but I will just do a slight indication of cooler side of the birch tree. So cool side will have more kind of bluish 
and it ends in O. I'll go with other colors later. But even the cooler side of the birch tree, not very light. Sorry, I kind of messed here, made mud. <laughs> I think I'll go for the vegetarian, I'll go with my other color. With my, uh, oh sorry, with my other brush. It will be much easier, this one. This one's not designed for <laughs> thin tree trunks. So I'm going just to leave this blue area here. Continue with the pine. I'll do a few more of those trees and some of them in the dark, some of them will be in the light so I'm doing darkest ones first so my birch tree kind of goes through those background colors of those trees and they're grey-green so I'm mixing a little bit of this green color into my grey mixture and make it a little lighter so that will be kind of underpainting under my birch tree because those trees in the background and I don't see them that much and then I do the ones that I see better in front actually I'm going to do just silhouette of the tree and silhouette of the other tree and then I'll go with the lighter color around them like for example like this I'll do something like this after but at this point I'll just do silhouettes and I can see some really cool greens at the back as well so messing in really I'm messing in at this point and then I will see later so I'll go in with cooler green I'm just squinting and see somewhere in the background there is some cooler greens so I'm going to pick those as well my very back, very very back of trees not thin as well but what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do silhouettes or darker and light where I see and then I'll add a little bit of sky even though it's not sky, it's fields this color and indicate some sky as in previous painting I'm only doing big shapes nothing else and my bristle brush is gross away and I'm starting to work with my smaller brush and try to give more definition to the trees to the birch tree because my actually main main one is the birch tree so but I need to work on trees so I'll compare and squint how light these trees that my very top tree so I think I need to add more warmer color so the very ends of these trees you can see kind of very warm 
the same time I know that there is a lot of warmth inside the tree, but at the same time I have cool shadow, so I don't want to overdo with those. I'm doing this and my mid-tone at the same time, kind of re-emphasizing. Now I'll go through my shadows, so the shadows are very cool. And then I have some branches going in front, this way, this way, so you should never forget about the branches that go, go all over the place. Some indications, not too many in the shade, but still some, and at the bottom they kind of go more to the ground. So I was talking about that put snow under it because it will be very difficult then to go through it. So that's my main tree and I think I'll add some golden, really green golden color later even more. I'll see how far I can go in value because that's my sunniest parts. So I just want to see I could get some indication how bright I can go or how much I should reserve. So different variations of green this time. <laughs> Before it was grey, now it's green. And I really want to go into my main character of this puzzle, my birch tree. So I'm doing complex purple. <laughs> By complex purple I mean like really alizarin and ultramarine and tiny bit of brown, just not to make it very and I want to try it and see will it work on the shadow part of my birch tree. Probably add pain gray, a little bit more of this pain gray. By accident I got an alizarin, so I have to just change it a little. I hope you can see my palette, so that's what I was trying to do. So actually I need more of this pain gray and I have this um, raw umber. Sometimes raw umber works really, really well for trees and yellow ochre as well. So I kind of, it's a matter of try and error. I think it's kind of looks like a birch tree at the bottom and in the shade. So I'm going to use my medium, just a tiny bit of medium. This is the darkest part of the birch tree. Then I go you go in here and I, adi I am adding <laughs> a little bit of yellow ochre so if even if like you move mix yellow ochre with um, black it would be similar kind of so my birch tree goes like this trying to put more paint here goes like this, this direction, and then this part goes. Like this, and then it has some branches there. So I'm mixing a little bit of this purple in here, the darker one, because it's dark at the bottom. Then I'm going to start gradually lightening it up as I go. So I probably will use thin brush as well, adding some 
yellow ochre or not yellow ochre uh, cadmium yellow deep and some white to my gray mixture because it's not pure yellow color that's the neutral part of it by neutral I mean like mid-tone of my birch tree and there are some darker areas here there is a actually much darker here to squint and I think what I'm going to do before I start paint behind it as well with some lighter branches from pine trees there before I start going into the birch tree branches and stuff I'm going to paint some of cooler ones at the back and then I will do some branches and then I do some lighter ones at the front so not as bright but the kind of uh, purple color and blue color so it's very similar to what I mixed so this will be the darker branches of the actually the smaller they don't have leaves but they have some branches in them so just indication of those a little now I'll go maybe with smaller brush and do some really thin thin nice branches so I'm going to mix it just here add a tiny bit of orange maybe to try and a little bit of yellow ochre because they're in the sun so Try to go with this color first. Maybe a little bit more white. Lots of white with uh, warm yellows. Trying to put lots of paint on the tip of this so it would work. Actually, inside of the tree, not as many bright branches, and mostly on the top. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the one that I see. tuning details but sometimes you need to do it because this adds to the character of this particular tree so you have to do it just a little not much some of them overlap so I'm trying to put this is the ridge of my brush I don't see all of them. This is only more kind of because this one is closer to the light. So I'm going to do another trick after after I'm done with these ones. So 
while I'm here with this brush I'm going to do some of the darker ones as well because it kind of works well with this brush just need a little patience that I don't have <laughs> for painting details I think I'll do a little bit more the lightest lights on the trunk that I see and after this I will go and do what I would normally do like when there are no leaves kind of just need to go with this little I'm even go even here actually. I noticed so I'm going here. Okay, I'll leave my little brush for now. I may get get back to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of scrub a little bit. I think orange might be too bright, yellow ochre orange, a little bit of brown, just not sure yet. It's kind of golden colour in the sun. And go the brightest, brightest, brightest branches of the birch tree. It actually even have some leaves left on it. Then the frost came, some leaves st still stayed on. So I'm going to be try to wipe my brush not and not to overdo as well because it's very easy. We do. I'm not putting my brush in the medium or anything because um, then I'll lose <laughs> the fluffiness of my brush. And then some of them really, I'll try to use this color Terra Rossa, a little bit of alizarin, almost like pink color purple pink except some of them were in the adding a little bit of red to it um, and a little bit of brown to tone it down I think I may stick to my original color just a little bit darker So some of the branches of Christmas tree go over birch tree. And now I want to get my shadow sand. I will go to the other trees after. Right now I want to get light and shadow under the tree. So here the birch tree. Very interesting patterns of the light. So I want to grab those. There is a big pattern of light here. Just in front of these trees. Then I'll go with the blue one. Actually not that dark. Everything that in the shade of these trees is blue because they're casting lots of shade, lots of shadows actually, <laughs> but they are in the they're creating cast shadows, that's what they do. Um, you can see for snow, I'm using like a really, really thick layer and just touch of yellow 
it's very bright in the sun. Correcting my birch tree a little bit. And now I'm going to work around these shadows. So there are some little areas here that kind of always interesting to watch that pattern of light so my other tree doesn't have too much light only a little and then I will paint a little bit of blue bluish here where the other trees then I'll get to those trees after they're not my there's some dark shadows so maybe it's too dark I'll tone it a little down The main thing, my golden, <laughs> I call it golden birch tree because it is, looks like it's golden. So do a little bit more, scrub a little bit more branches. So I'm trying to walk back and see. Yeah, it looks okay so far. Different, but something to try. don't have much sky in there so I think I will go back and do a little bit of sky just where I can because I don't see much of it mostly trees and then I'll go with trees in the sky so it's kind of back and forth I want to make it a little bit lighter so washing my brush from the lighter colors and then go back with green brown mixture and also going with some lighter greens at the back I'm kind of mixing it with the, tr with the sky. Now I'm going to look for light patterns in the other trees. The one that kind of mixing warm yellows, whatever I have left here with green. Adding a little bit more cadmium yellow dip. So there are some branches going there of the trees. There is a branch from this closest tree. Cadmium yellow light as well. Actually cadmium yellow light works well on this one. Maybe I should try it on this one too. It adds a little bit of brighter. Even though it's a little cooler yellow, but it kind of brightens the painting in the areas where it's still yellow so in the areas where the trees are the lightest it's good to have a variation in the painting because the other ones are cooler greens and I go back with my 
so light is now on my palette it's not good but I think I might be almost done soon so kind of going a good thing my brush at this point is very very fluffy and I'm not giving many details to the trees at the back I only give some indication that there are pines there actually I'm going to give more depth to that one to do my trunks of the furthest trees again they're very cool you can hardly see them but they're there so once I put the trunks it's obvious that there are trees there and don't have to separate each and single tree I think now suddenly I start seeing my main character better so I'm going to do a little bit even exaggerate the snow because it's very bright here I'm going to make a very thick pattern of snow here and it is very bright can see it. Gives no gives very good like indication that it's a very bright sunny day. Yeah I think I can start feeling it now before I couldn't <laughs> So the only other thing I want to do, I want to see if I can enhance my uh, make a little bit brighter my uh, main character, my birch tree, even though it's not very bright over there. Just want to see if that will help a little. This is in the shade, the trunk, and this one in the shade. So I'll make my brush very dry and do some leaves again. Somewhere where I lost them. So there are some branches going to the sky. I have some white and yellow here. So I think I would leave it at this point because otherwise I will overwork and that's something that I really already started doing so I missed this I lost lost this gray in the middle I think I need to go back with a small brush just 
to do some of those tiny br branches. Just a few of those. Just a little, not too many. We want it mostly open to the sun. And it's not pure white, it just has a tiny bit of cut yellow dip in it. Just already made this puddle of whatever it is. I think that should be good enough for a sketch so I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe you heard some interesting things that you may use in your paintings in the future so I'm going to look a little closer to this it's in the sun right now and I don't know if Turning it to the sun will help or not. Actually, I'm turning it like this. I hope you see it. This is my palette. I think it started going a little, little bright and sunny, and palette lost some of the. <laughs> started getting glare. Okay, so that's another sketch of winter and I hope to do more if not winter than flowers and happy painting to you too.